What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Trackwalk RC podcast. Joining us for episode number 24, Colin Branch and Travis Kendall hosting this circus again for you guys tonight. And this is a special episode as this is part two of our Young Guns of the Northwest. Tonight, later on, we get to talk to some very important youngins in the RC community here in the Northwest. Everybody knows who they are. Well, mostly. But for those of you who don't, that's why we're doing this. So, later tonight, we get to talk to diehards Marcus Ramirez and Ash in Bristol. Um, as kind of sort of self-explanatory, if you don't know really a whole lot about them, they're uh, diehard RC locals. Um Marcus is, uh, you know, Mr. Diehard, you know, Brett Wilson, that's his nephew. Um, and you know, they, they don't get away from diehard too much, but, uh, you know, with the help of the podcast and hopefully some, uh, race decisions next year, uh, you know, you guys will get to see a little bit more of them. But for those of you who do know them, you know that they're great kids. Uh, and then we also get to talk to the Bartlett brothers, Dylan Bartlett, Brendan Bartlett, um, just absolutely, you know, absolutely great kids. Um, we had a lot of fun talking to them. Uh, that interview ran pretty long, but, um, no, we had a great time talking to them and, uh, a lot of fun, uh, catching up and previewing kind of what we expect from next year. Um, so, you know, we're pretty, pretty satisfied with the way this turned out. You know, we got to learn a lot. Um, you know, even Colin and I got to learn quite a bit, you know, um, just from our fellow racers, you know, and the, uh, the future uh, top guns of uh, of RC racing in the Northwest. So um, that's coming on a little bit later. So we're super excited to be able to bring that to you. Um, but for now, Colin, how you doing this week? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Travis? I am doing pretty good. Pretty good. I'm trying to trying to wrap my head around that somehow it was like we had no episodes for the show, and now we're already up to 24. <laughs> yeah, we're um, just the- pumping them out now. The weeks are flying, and I guess this is only the second one since I've been back, but it already feels like they're just coming. So It just never ends, um, does it? No, So which is great. So, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm really stoked that we were, bringing it, we were able to bring out another Young Guns as soon as, uh, as, soon as we did. I was kind of worried it wasn't going to be for a while. But after we did the first one and then a couple people messaged me asking about, you know, this person, this person, I felt so dumb. I was like, man, how could I forget? I know, so right? I'm, I'm so, I'm super stoked that we were able to make this happen and, uh, and get these guys on here. Um, so no, that was, that was a good idea on your part. So yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, you know, we're, we're ecstatic, you know, and, uh, I mean, we know these are just going to keep piling up, but we could not do that without the support of you guys, the listeners. And we are very, very, very thankful, um, for just the amount of, uh, support and loyalty, uh, that you guys have shown us since we've started this project, especially since, uh, you know, no shows for a couple, couple weeks in the beginning. And then, um, you know, kind of a break in October while I was gone and, you know, Colin was busy. And so I was it's more been, uh, logically challenged than I was busy. Well, I, I was going to give you the benefit of the doubt since you were racing a lot. <laughs> well, I was doing that too, but didn't really have another host, but you know, we can, we can yeah. talk it up to whatever, <laughs> well. but I, regardless, you know, uh, it was pretty cool to see so many people stick with us through that time. And so, you know, that's a, that's a, you know, I said it last week too, but that's a big thank you from myself and, uh, from Colin, I'm sure too, that, you know, yes. we're just super stoked to be able to continue to bring this content out for you guys every week. So, uh, thank you a lot. Yeah. I was, so, I was expecting people to kind of forget about what we're doing and it would just kind of 
fade, but nope. The amount of people that were asking for more episodes and kept asking, are we still recording and this kind of stuff? It's like, you know, we got to keep doing this. Yeah, we gotta, well, I think... Keep going. Yeah, us being in Northwest, too, you know, I mean, you know, I, I think that that's a big thing is uh, I would hope, you know, that, uh, you know, the people who are listening to us, I mean, a lot of you guys know us personally, so, you know, you can relate to us a lot better than, you know, some of the more national podcasts. Not that there's anything wrong with those, but, you know, that's, that's you know, why we keep it the way we do is, you know, so that we, you know, <laughs> we can have the same conversation here that you would have it at NCT, you know, so, um, it's, you know, it's pretty cool, so. Um, one thing, um, that I really wanted to jump into while we're starting here as we kind of glanced over it last week and, um, I felt bad cause it kind of, in all honesty, kind of slipped my mind for most of the episode, um, just cause we had so much to cover, but, um, a, uh, an indoor carpet track, I believe, uh, down in, uh, Utah. I don't know um, if it was car- carpet or not. I, I thought it was. I- so I thought I, I I don't know for sure, but I think I saw something about you know someone was saying you know they don't want the carpet scene to die there. So I don't know. Um, I, I I apologize. I'm not super familiar with like the the RC landscape of uh, the Salt Lake area. Um, I, I don't know if, if it was even in the Salt Lake area. Salt Lake, Utah. I don't know anything. It about was in Utah. Utah. So I'll just I'll just yeah. preface that. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about Utah. Focus Focus um, RC, but, in Utah. Yeah, Focus RC went down um, in flames. Unfortunately, they had a pretty uh, pretty devastating fire that pretty much rendered them, you know, uh, out for the time being. You know, they're not running. Um, and so, um, I'll try and find a link. Um, but there is a GoFundMe for it. Um, and uh, if um, you guys want to know more, uh, you know, I'm going to have to do this too, but if you guys want to know more about, uh, like what exactly is going on and what they're trying to do, um, if any of you guys are friends with like Patrick Simpson on Facebook, he's a Utah local. Um, they were doing something with the GoFundMe where, uh, the, the racers who did race there and raced there regularly. Um, even though there's no more racing, they're, um, contributing to the GoFundMe as if they were paying their entry fees for the nights they were racing anyways. So, um, I thought that was pretty cool. So, um, but definitely, uh, I'll, 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 I'll do my best to find the link for that GoFundMe and post it in the, uh, the description for the show so that way you guys can find it, but definitely, uh, pop over and help them out. Um, especially, you know, this is kind of a, uh, a calling out to the diehard locals, um, you know, kind of rally around our uh, fellow tracks here in the Northwest, um, Obviously, most people remember what happened with Die Hard with the massive theft. We thought, you know, kind of looking at things, wondering how we were ever going to race again. And, you know, sure enough, you know, uh, we found a way through just some incredible efforts by some people. So and the community as a whole. Um, So I guess this would be me um, asking that to. uh, Our Die Hard community in particular that, you know, since we all kind of know what that's like, um, definitely uh if you have any way that you can help them out and uh show any kind of support um i'm sure they would greatly appreciate it because uh you know we never want to see tracks closed but we certainly do not want to see it happen that way so um definitely uh just check check the description if um i didn't put it in the description and you're listening to this now message me and i will find that for you and i will i will share the link to you through messenger or however you choose to get a hold of me so um yeah so uh just keep that in mind uh focus rc down in uh utah and uh you know uh I said, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get that gofundme uh shared to you guys um so we can get them racing again yeah, and a really cool thing happened over the weekend. Uh, the carpet race in Boise, I believe it was, Nampa, mm-hmm. uh, they were able to generate over six hundred dollars for the oh, wow. uh, for the track. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I guess Shane, what I what I did Shane, see. Oh, sorry. sorry. Shane Borden put the. Uh, put the race on and organized it. And then he organized a fundraiser for the track alongside of it oh, um, okay. for focus RC. And they, they were able to generate over $600. What a, what a, wow. what a great, uh, great way of raising some money for, for a fellow track. 
Oh yeah, dude, that's that's killer. I didn't I didn't even hear about that. I know the guys. I think it's a. I don't know for sure because I didn't even hear. Um, this is the first time I heard about the track, um, just in total. But um, I I heard. I think it's a, a some brothers that run the track. I think I it's a it's, so. it's two brothers that run it, and they went up and had like raced at that race there, and so um, I can only imagine how cool it was when that fundraiser kind of came out and you know they were oh you know uh given that money hopefully that uh that made them feel a little bit better about the situation obviously you know it it doesn't fix all of it but it's just the effort you know and i i mean that that moves a lot of people and you know so i i, I hope that they know um you know how much support is surrounding them in the rc community and hopefully that place can uh like I said, get get back to running very soon because you know that's we don't want to see that happen under any circumstances, you know. So no, no, no. That was uh, it's a bad deal, and it was it's great to see so many people coming together to support them. And you know, it's our RC family. We've mentioned it time and again that we always seem to come together and, and help each other, and we are a great big family nationwide, worldwide, and uh, just proves it once again. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah, definitely that's a that's a big thing. Um and like I said, if I if for whatever reason that skipped my mind to put it in the description, uh message me um and I will get it updated or I will get you the link if you are asking for it. So, I I can get you the link. I I'll I'll get it from Shane and we can put it up. Cool. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, because I'd love to have that into in, uh, for ease of access, so I can put that in the description, so so people can uh people can contribute to that if they are able. Definitely. So, no, for sure. Um, Colin, did you have anything you wanted to mention? Uh, I just wanted to thank all our uh, young guns for coming on, and I know we're going to have more uh, of these episodes because there's a lot of young guns that are quickly catching up to us elders that, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> that we're going to have to have on the show and uh, all all four of these that we had on tonight are uh, extremely well-rounded and uh, well-disciplined young men at this point so very proud to have them as part of our RC family here in the northwest and can't wait to see them all at the track again here soon yeah, absolutely. Alrighty, well, with that, then we're going to jump uh, right into interviews here. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Alright, so our first guest tonight for the Young Guns episode here we're bringing to you, episode number 24, uh, is Ash and Bristol. Ash and Bristol is one of the youngins at the Die Hard community. Uh, him, part of the Bristol family, have been very instrumental and, uh, you know, being the backbone that's kind of keeping Die Hard RC, you know, where it's at, you know, they help out uh, tremendously both on and off the track, um, away from the facility, basically anything that Die Hard is needed. And, uh, you know, Ashen is a very bright young man who, uh, you know, very smart, you know, uh, who is just invested in all kinds of RC. So here we are, Ashen Bristol. What's up, Ashton? How you doing tonight, man? Good. How about you? <laughs> doing, uh, doing pretty good. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, real quick, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, you know, you've been a uh, a pretty big part of the diehard RC scene. You know, we talk about it a lot on this show, and um, you know, you and your family have been, you know, in the community since the beginning. Um, you know, and I have played a big role in the success of that place. And, um, with that, you know, you have also kind of made a name for yourself on your own, uh, from your personal driving to all the stuff you do kind of outside of just racing. So, um, you know, just real quick, um, you know, t tell us just a little bit, you know, about yourself, how old you are and, uh, you know, what you like to do mostly. Yeah, so my name is Ashton Bristol. I live in a small town of Granite Falls. Um, I have been in the RC longer than I can remember. Uh, my favorite, because I do all sides RC, I do scale, 
acrobatics planes, drone racing, car racing, all of that. And my favorite by far is the drones. And yeah, we just, we, I try to make the most of the RC community and it's an amazing place to be. Yeah. You're doing really well with the drones lately. I hear. Yeah. But, uh, during the winter we race little or tiny whoops for like 75 millimeters ducted fan little guys that we race in houses and breweries and all that. Yeah. You guys race over at uh, Sumerian brewing, don't you? Yep. Yeah, that's like uh, two buildings away from where we work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Free Fly is like two buildings over from where you're, uh, you guys are racing in the brewery. <laughs> so I'm guessing you go there a lot. Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. speed secret <laughs> yeah so you know you said that you 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 touch like all types of rc you know uh, planes drones um you know cars scale truck all that so um what is it that you know because some people like generally gravitate towards like one thing so what is it about rc that you know has created that draw for you where it's just like you know you're you're living it and breathing it like every day it doesn't matter the discipline it, it really just has to do about the learning curve because I'm a very technical guy. I love technology. I love learning about all of it. And just when I first started in RC, I, it was on the car side and I loved it and I wanted to learn more. And eventually I kind of hit a wall where I couldn't learn much more uh, unless it got really scientific based on that side So I kind of started branching out to different areas to learn about other things because you learn so much about like uh, technology and science and math and all that just with the simple, even the cars, you learn so much about it. Right. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, that, that has kind of played into, you know, just a little bit that you do outside of RC too. Like I know that, um, I know that you do a lot of sports and, uh, that you do, uh, a pretty decent amount of CAD work and 3d printing too, which I don't personally know a lot about, um, as far as what you're doing over there, but, uh, you know, take us a little bit through that. Like what have, uh, what's been your like 3d printing, um, motivation and, you know, what have you enjoyed from that side? Uh, 3d printing is, uh, uh, 3d cat or, uh, what is that? Just CAD. Uh, so you get to learn the modeling software and just different types of programs that you can use in many different uh, applications if you in a job. So if you if you know how to do any CAD program or any of that, you you have that background knowledge to be able to do it because you know like the metrics of the different measurements and all that. Because I just I learn a lot from just modeling 3D printing parts for like my racing drones or just simple things around my desk that I use the like hang stuff on and all that. Very cool. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I have a hard time turning my computer on most days. <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, you know, you're, you're like I've touched on, you know, you're a diehard local. Um, that's pretty much like the only place that you race consistently on cars. Um, what about Die Hard is it that, you know, has made you um, like so invested on that side? Like, you know, what do you find the most fun about racing there? The From every place that I have heard of from other people racing, it's the most connected community from all the different, all the different communities. So like at, at their RC park out in Snohomish, they have all the different sides of it. So you have all of these communities interlinked within a very small area. So you get to learn different backgrounds from different people. And you, most places don't have that ability. They just have like, a, like down in Tacoma, they have their clay track. So they just have the one track and it's just whoever runs clay. So you only get to learn one different set of people. 
Right. Oh, yep. okay. That you makes sense. I like that. I haven't really thought about that one too much, actually. It's just kind of the uh, the hub for RC in the area as far as, you know, um, all just the different communities kind of being together in one place. Huh. What classes do you race, Ashen? For cars? Yeah. I run two-wheel modified buggy and 13.5 uh, stadium truck. Okay. What's your favorite class? Um, it kind of varies based on uh, the level of competition. Lately, with the indoor series, it's been two-wheel modified because there's just so much tight competition between the drivers. Our times are even within tenths of a second through a five-minute race, and it's just getting super intense. Okay, and what's what's your best, uh, you know, your, your the result you're most proud of so far? From RC this year, um, I had a comeback truck win in race two. I had a cross-country meet districts in Lakewood, went up there early in the morning to Lakewood, uh, ran, and then came back and missed the first set of quals. So I, all I had was my practice, pretty much a practice, which was qual two, and then the mains. So I had seen it in, in round two and it, yeah, managed to come back and take the truck win. Wow. Well, very little track time. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. What uh, Are you planning on doing any big races in the future? Um, I don't know. I, now that I'm able to drive, I'm thinking about venturing down south to Tacoma RC Raceway or up to Burlington for some of their races next summer. Um, I, I just don't really know what... Uh, what surface I want to try out next, whether it be dirt or clay. I used to race clay years ago, but it's been so long that I can't remember how the car handles. <laughs> right. It's completely different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way different than carpet. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever try out some eight scale stuff? Um, I've always wanted to. My dad would kill me if I ever uh, got an eight scale. <laughs> he'd kill you because he'd have right. to get one too yeah it's very true <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> what are your goals then you know you've been getting consistently quicker in uh, RC racing on surface um, you know you've been really stepping it up on the drone level you know you kind of seem to be um you know, just really improving on all in all uh, disciplines right now. So, do you have any intention or desire to like take it further? Like, do you have any like you know what what are your goals going forward as far as like what do you kind of envision this becoming for you? Um, I've always wanted to get into the live action like cinematic flying for the drones. I have some friends, uh, so Jordan Temkin or Jet that lives in Seattle. He uh, goes all over the world and flies drones and people hire him to go out and like file, follow people on dirt bikes or jet skis and all this. Uh, and it's, he gets to travel the world and see everything and do everything pretty much. Is he making a living doing the drone stuff? Yes. Yeah, he his living uh, right now is traveling and flying. He also has a brand uh, called Project 399. He, he, he produces and sells uh, drone frames. Oh, cool. For, for like, racing? Uh, he, he does not mainly freestyle and long range. So, like, he has... Uh, five inch freestyle then he has a seven inch long range and then a seven inch tank uh race rig that he has he, gotcha. he's still on the he's he's only like a year in so he's pretty new to all of it he's slowly like building on his products 
Right, right. So you 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 like the cinematic stuff and and taking pictures and that kind of thing with the drones. Yeah, yeah. The oh. ability to get places where a standard person cannot reach and be able to see it it just amazes me on what they're capable of. Yeah, I think I think you might be interested in uh, where we work. <laughs> This is, <laughs> just, a, just, a, just a little just bit. Just a little bit of that stuff going on. So, you know, with as spread around, I guess, as you are and everything that you do, what is um, maybe the one thing you've kind of had your eye on or have been wanting to try that maybe you haven't gotten a chance to touch yet? Like, is there anything that you've been kind of, you know, thinking about getting into or trying or pursuing? Um, not really. I, uh, up until this summer, I wanted to get in the scale, uh, RC planes and Tyler Wilbur, uh, what is, was an amazing guy. And he, him and his father put together a 91 inch extra 300 acrobatics plane for me. So that was kind of the last thing on my, R, my RC wish list. And it was a, just a gift to me that I got in the middle this summer. <laughs> so have you flown it? That's pretty awesome. Huh? Have you flown it? Yeah, I, I've been, I flew it a lot when the field was open. I flew <laughs> it. Oh, that's awesome. I think the last month and a half of the field. And then we went over to uh, a event called Huckfest over in tri cities and flew there for four days straight. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That thing's that thing must be huge. Yeah, it's currently my storage. Uh, how I'm storing it right now is the nose on the ground and the tail sticking up, and it's about three inches from touching my ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's crazy. So, you know, with your, you know, continuous learning and improvement in your skill set, um, you know, has there been anything in particular um, that has really, um, I guess, aided you along the way? Like, what would you, you know, attribute your so far success to? Um, my my parents are really big supporters in all of this. My sister does softball. And other than me doing running, I don't have anything else I really other do other than RC. Um, yeah, my parents and the Wilbur family, they have supported me for the last two, three years or even more with on all sides of the RC. Um, they, Tyler Wilbur has guided me through the, how just learning about the simple parts and how to rebuild shocks on my uh, cars to tuning my race quads to be able to fly better. There, he just seems to always be there for me and ha- I've learned a lot from him. You know, I, that, that seems to be a common thread. I, we, I've heard several people say how much Tyler has helped them. Yeah. He, uh, he seems to be quite a, uh, a, a a uh, helpful guy within our community. Everyone seems to love him. Yeah, he he doesn't react or brag about anything of his or any of that. He's just there to have fun and show others what's going or how everything goes and just expand the uh, community and our RC world. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, that's the thing. Uh, I, you know, I think myself and a lot of people, you know, like yourself, can attribute, um, you know, really a lot of, uh, you know, success from Tyler. You know, um, it's also, you know, it's really good to have people locally that, you know, especially that are are relative in age, you know, that um, can 
you know, help and be a resource and are just always approachable. And Tyler has been one of those guys as long as I've known him and went to school with him. Like, um, you know, it, it's amazing what that guy can remember and um, just how much he's, how much he knows and how much he's always learning. So um, I, God, I wish we could get Tyler on at some point, but I don't think podcasts would really be his thing. But no, nah, for sure. So I'm, I'm glad you, you mentioned him because yeah, he does a lot of good for the area. Yeah, I've thought about getting him yeah. on. I, I don't know, I don't know if he'd want to or not. Yeah, I'll have to see. Yeah. I'll have to see. He, he's one of those guys where he, uh, if he doesn't know or doesn't feel like he wants to answer, he never does. So like, I'll ask him a question, and it'll take like two weeks for me to get an answer. <laughs> yeah so i don't think we need to ask what your favorite track is we already know what what that one is <laughs> yeah no that's true so um let's see so going into next year you know uh you touched on you know maybe wanting to get out to some other tracks and stuff are there any maybe different classes locally or at other tracks you would like to try barring aid scale since we covered? Um, yeah. Uh, Jesse mine this last summer tried to get me up to Burlington and have me run, uh, his eight scale E truggy. And everybody I've heard says it's just an awesome class and a lot of fun to run. <laughs> That's easily some of the most fun cars to drive for sure. Um, Colin loves E-Truggies. Oh, it's my favorite class. But it's Colin's favorite track, or favorite class, excuse me. But no, uh, that would you need to make that up next year because um, I think you would really like Gate Scale for sure. Especially, especially just anything electric Gate Scale, you'd be killer at. So keep that in the back of your mind, and make sure your dad listens to that too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you're still in school. What, uh, how much longer in school do you have? Um, we have my science teacher puts up like day 50 of 180 or something. So we have 127 more days left till you graduate. No, uh, less than this school year. I'm, I'm a sophomore in high school right now. Okay. All right. Okay. And what are your what are your plans after high school? Haven't really put my finger on what exactly I want to do. I know I want to do something in the engineering field. It's just a matter of finding something where I can apply what I'm doing now a lot into it, which I don't think should be very hard. Yeah. Hey, maybe drones. Yeah, something to do something with that. along those lines. That'd be cool. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, with that, you know, I mean, is there anyone that you know? You you, you talked about your parents earlier, but uh, you know, is there anyone else that you wanted to mention? You know, a uh, quick shout out to or thank you to for you know your time in RC so far. Yeah, I want to thank Brent and Brenda Wilson with Die Hard RC. Uh, they have been helping me a lot through the last couple of years, even since we first started in RC. Um, I've been doing the last two years uh, STEM camps with them during the summer with uh, Snohomish County Boys and Girls Clubs. And that uh, just kind of opened my doors to younger kids and trying to show them what RC is all about. And you learn, you actually learn a lot from just, showing kids, uh, even just people who are like six years old, uh, how much interest in the RC that they have. Right. So you go and you, you help with those STEM classes and teach kids. Yeah. That's awesome. How important do you think it is to, you know, kind of get, um, more kids involved into RC uh, I think it's really important because you 
if you look at most of the guys now in the RC community, there are, most of them are older gentlemen. So, hey, I, hey, people careful. Say, talk about health. <laughs> <laughs> People talk about how the younger kids are dominating the older, but if you look at the general uh, group of people, there's a lot of older kids and our community will only grow and thrive if we have the younger uh, generation getting into it because then they can pass it on to their kids and then you just growing the community in every way you can. Right. And one thing that, that we haven't mentioned yet is you and your, and your whole family are a big part of the diehard rug rats and the, and helping out with the track and anything that they need. Uh, that's something that I'm sure that they would be thanking you guys for. We all do. Yeah. We all thank you guys for it. <laughs> yeah we we uh when we first met brent and brenda we were racing at mike's rc world up in bellingham and it was just a clay track indoors and once they closed uh brent and brenda wanted to start diehard rc and my dad didn't want to quit the rc so he was just like let's do this and help them in every way he could it still does to this day. Yep. <laughs> he still tells me about all the time he spends at his desk trying to, or uh, messing around, trying different layouts and mapping stuff out on his computer for different car layouts and all this. Right, right. Well, that's awesome. When uh, Are you going to come out to Die Hard this weekend and race? Yeah, my, my hope is to make it. Don't know how well I'll do uh, with the amount of meds I'll be on, but I'm just going to make it worthwhile. <laughs> so no corner marshalling for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Well, thank you for letting me know early. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. Anything else you want to add? Not really. Uh, thank you guys for... Uh, asking me to be on this and getting to know me more yeah absolutely yeah, dude totally it was wow well, love to love to get you recognized outside of the uh diehard area man so no we, we really appreciate you making the time for us thank you all right cool Alrighty, yeah, I don't really have anything else to call on. yeah uh, I kind of blew through the questions earlier yeah so. you just rocked through it uh, so yeah all right. Well, thank you, Ashen, very much for coming on and uh, talking to us today at Track Walk. We really appreciate it, and uh, well, we can't wait to see you Saturday. Yep, can't wait to see you guys too. Right on, man. Sounds good. Take it easy, thank bud. You. You too. Bye bye. All right. Thank you, Ashen, so much for coming on. Absolute blast talking to him, and hopefully, all of you get a chance to know him a little bit better you know go up say hi at the track and hopefully ashen makes it out to a couple other ones next year so moving on to our next guest of the night marcus ramirez marcus ramirez is the uh, nephew of brett and brenda wilson uh who run die hard rc you know that's their project uh mr and mrs die hard affectionately and marcus an incredible young man who's getting very quick um and it's pretty cool to see how quickly he's progressed and, uh, you know, how he's learning to race at the same time. Um, you know, he's, you know, a fantastic kid. So, hey, Marcus, how are we doing, bud? Good, how are you? Doing, doing pretty good. Thanks uh, a ton for coming on and uh, making the time for us to, to be our special guest on the show tonight. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me on. How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you, Colin? Uh, well, thanks. So, Marcus Ramirez, you are a very integral part to the RC community here at Die Hard RC, right? You know, you've um, obviously Mr. Die Hard, Brett Wilson, your uncle. You know, Brett and Brenda are, you know, obviously the the centerpiece of the community here, and you know, you are no different. Um, but not a lot of people know who you are. 
And so, you know, one of the big things we want to do with uh, when we have special episodes like this is, you know, get people like you known and get the youth of our industry out there, especially here in the Northwest, because, you know, the kids are what's going to keep this going, you know. Um, so what I it's, I really just want to get into one thing to start us off, and that's, dude, how did you get so damn fast so quick? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like... I, I went away for like a year and I come back mm-hmm. and you are just throwing down in a mains like, dude, what is it that changed suddenly in either in yourself or in your program that just like clicked for you that like just made everything really start to come together? Like what, what happened? I honestly think it's just working on my cars actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my, con- I, 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 my consistency has got, my consistency has gone up a little bit. I would agree. Um, my maturity level's gone up, so I feel like that's been a big part of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I mean, it's it's been just a lot of fun watching you race. You know, that's a big thing. Is that you know the more you know the quicker you're getting, the more you're also learning, and that's that's been really cool to see. Um, so, how how old are you? Fifteen. Okay, so fifteen. So, um. I would say that on average from what I've seen on, you know, from people, especially here in the Northwest, that tends to be the age where things kind of click for some kids. So what, um, you know, with that, you know, you're getting quicker, you know, you're being able to be a lot more competitive, uh, and not only at Die Hard, but you know, you went up to Skagit. Um, was it just for the NCT this last year or did you go for some club racing too? It was, I went to the regionals. Right, right. The regionals and then the NCT. Okay. So... You, you, so you've had some, some, some dirt, you know, dirt experience too. Um, if I remember correctly, you won the sportsman e-buggy class at, uh, at the NCT, correct? Yeah. So, you know, you don't have as much dirt experience, obviously Die Hard is your home. So what was the biggest thing, you know, translating between the surfaces that, you know, um, was, you know, was tougher for you to deal with? Like what was the hardest thing you came across that weekend in terms of trying to learn eight scale? Um, probably the difference in roughness, like the bumps, that was hard to get handle of, and the ter- trying to turn into the corners, since it's looser than carpet, of course. Right. It's it was harder for me to translate that from carpet to dirt. Okay. So, then then other thing too is that you know you've been. Uh, obviously surrounded by some other fast individuals as well. You know, uh, Tyler Wilbur for one, uh, Carson sometimes, uh, you know, you have your fellow, fellow youngins in like Ash and Bristol, right. Who, you know, um, we also had on this week, you know, um, do you find yourself particularly motivated by the, um, the speed of the people kind of closer to your age? Like, do you kind of want to get out and be sort of one of the faster, faster kids around? Oh yeah. I like, Battling with my buddies like Ashen and sometimes Joseph at, when 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 they come out sometimes out at dirt it was it's a nice thing with the race with people your age it's I enjoy that. That's Wait, cool. how, when did your voice get so so deep? This is new. <laughs> I don't know. I don't notice it actually. I don't notice my voice changing. People come up and say, Cause "Your voice has changed a lot." How? I know I came I came back and his voice is deep. He's like a foot taller than me. Not that that's saying a whole lot, but it's like <laughs> I was like, damn, what happened? <laughs> uh, so you came and ran some nitro this year at uh, what? Just one race? Um, uh, at the regionals. Regionals. regionals yeah. yeah, I ran two classes. Yeah, you ran regular nitro and uh, junior junior as well you did very well in junior didn't you yeah i think i got fourth yeah yeah and you got a flame out but that happens in nitro of course yeah yeah do we are we going to speak about uh why We're that not happened gonna speak about that moment nope <laughs> uh we won't we won't mention brett on this uh mm. on this episode <laughs> but i kind of i kind of got him back Oops. in one of the outdoor races so <laughs> uh, so how do you 
how do you compare nitro to electric? Do you which one do you like better? I can't choose. Nitro, <laughs> it's fun. Electric, it's fun. I just electric has more punch, but nitro is a whole nother monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot more to nitro, isn't there? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, are you going to do any more nitro racing coming up this this next year? Do you think? I hope. I was hang talking out. Uncle about going to Big Barn, so hopefully oh. it's in Canada. So I don't know if that's a possibility, but hopefully yeah. I can go. That'd be cool. Yeah, Canada's pretty scary. You got to watch out for those Canadians. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so. You you run mostly associated vehicles for an obvious reason. Yeah. Uh, are you are you sponsored by Associated? You just love the love the products and and you're surrounded by it, so that's what you run. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so what what grade are you in in school? I am freshman, ninth grade. Okay. All right. And how's that going this year? It's going good. I uh, yeah. yeah, it's going pretty smooth. And is there any girls going to that school? Girls? Yeah, um, you know, the opposite of guys. Oh yeah, of course there are. <laughs> <laughs> so have you noticed girls yet? I have. Uh and you're still interested um, in RC cars. Of course I am. <laughs> Percy's my girlfriend. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> it's probably it's probably cheaper that way. Yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you run two wheel mod and you run truck as well, correct? Correct. On the carpet. Mm-hmm. Which do you prefer? Buggy. More competitive, I in my opinion, and truck yep. is just nice, relaxing, and just chill, have fun, type racing. That's kind of like forty plus. It's kind of the same way. Yeah. It's just it's just more fun because it's not as intense. Exactly. Forty plus there, is there, there's some more time, bench there's racing. Some intense racing. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Forty plus some is more bench there, racing though. Sorry. But yeah, you're right. No, you're, you're absolutely right though. Is that the I think two wheel is a little bit more intense, but you guys are absolutely killing it with some of the battles in truck, though. Like that oh, was yeah. some serious fun this last Saturday. I'm really bummed that. Yeah, it's a bad luck, unfortunately, but I mean, oh yeah, uh, you're gonna make up for it this weekend, right? Hopefully. <laughs> and and speaking of Die Hard, uh, you really blew everybody away last week at Die yeah. Hard. And it had nothing to do with uh, your driving skills or anything that happened on the track. Um, the the national anthem being played on the trumpet was spectacular. You did an amazing job, and I can't imagine how how nervous you must have been up there in front of everybody oh, doing boy. that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did a fabulous job, man. Thank you. That was uh, that was awesome, and I think we should start every race yeah. doing that. <laughs> no, absolutely, man. I was like, I was like nervous, like watching. So I, mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine like how you felt up there, and then for you to just go up there and just crush it, like that was awesome. Like I was, yeah. I think everyone that day was watching that was just super impressed. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bring bring that trumpet more often. <laughs> <laughs> Want to put you on the spot just a little bit more? That was awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you play musical instruments at school, or how did you learn to play the trumpet? Uh, I started in sixth grade. My uncle gave me his old trumpet that he used when he was a kid. So I've been using that since I was in sixth grade. Brett used to play the trumpet. Yes, he did. Okay, so this week at Die Hard, we're going to have a guest playing the national anthem <laughs> on Saturday morning, and it won't be Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> and who's going to be able to do it better? I don't know. Let's see. Can't picture Brad with the trumpet. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to message him here when we're done. <laughs> Tell him that he's on on stage. That would be cool. <laughs> yes, it would. That would be awesome. Uh, so, do you, do you you like playing music? Is that something that you do as a hobby outside of RC? Yeah, um, I I don't really do it at home a lot. Usually, I do it we're at, uh, at school. We're gonna be doing a uh, like a a Christmas parade march next month. Oh wow! So right now we're so, practicing for that at school. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Very cool. So you, you, you obviously play the trumpet in that, yes. or do you play something else? Trumpet. Okay. All right. And you have aspirations to to carry that on in the future, and and maybe go somewhere with that. Probably, probably not. Depending on how the school year goes, <laughs> how my <laughs> mindset changes in that whole perspective. That's right. right. Yeah. I wish I could play a musical instrument. I'm terrible. Yeah, it takes a lot to practice. Yeah, anytime I see Something somebody has... playing a, anytime I see somebody playing a musical instrument, I'm just like envious that that you've uh, got the skills and you've dedicated enough time and, and effort into it, to be able yeah. to do it. That's some cool. people say is it takes ten thousand hours to become a professional at something. Yeah. I, I can believe that, for sure. What else do you do outside of RC? Um, trumpet. Uh, video games. Video games. What's your favorite video game? Probably Watch Dogs too. Really? I have never never heard of that. I like Mario Kart. <laughs> 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 that's about my level of. That's a, that's a fun game as well. <laughs> uh, so, as far as your RC career is concerned, where where are you hoping that it will take you? Are you are you going to keep it fun? Or are you going to try to take it serious? I don't want to take it serious. I want to keep it fun. I don't want to lose friends over the whole competitive thing. I don't want to. I want to keep it friendly. So I want to fun competitive, yeah, but I don't want to be like angry competitive, like yeah. Right answer. That's a that's a good answer. But <laughs> no, that's sure. awesome. I and mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to go as far as you can with it. But man, yeah, that's just it. I I, I say this time and time again. You gotta you gotta remember why you do it, and you gotta keep yeah. it fun. And if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? You know, I mean, <laughs> no, none of us are getting paid to do it, so I have no incentive <laughs> beyond. Having fun to do it, exactly. So just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. yeah sure. So, what do you want to do when you get out of school? I don't know. Besi besides drive RC cars, <laughs> um, <laughs> probably an engineer. Okay. Hmm. You can yeah. design design RC cars. I could design RC cars, yeah. <laughs> There's probably more money in designing them than there is driving them. Probably. I'd say so. <laughs> right. Uh, so who... We're going to ask you a couple. It's kind of a two-sided question here. What? Uh, mm -hmm. Who is your favorite local driver that you look up to? And then who is your favorite uh, national or international driver that you look up to? It's a hard one. <laughs> so many people that so many people that support me just can't choose. Uh, that's very diplomatic. Mm. Well, if you had <laughs> like to if you, if you had to choose one that you that stands out above the rest, that's that is your absolute favorite. You you love watching him him or her drive. Um, you know this, their attitude and all that kind of stuff. The answer doesn't have to be Colin. So don't worry. Not. Like, <laughs> I would be surprised. If it was. <laughs> don't worry. He's not fishing. No. no. <laughs> well, there's two. There's Jonathan Cantrell, of course. Okay. And Tyler Wilbur. Tyler, that's was that two votes now? 
this week for Tyler Wilbur. Yeah. Wow. I think we might have to have Tyler on the show. Oh, yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, and, and what about internationally or nationally? Who's, you know, who's your favorite pro? I don't know. I I don't watch too many. Yeah, I, I, gonna, I, know I was going to ask, if do you even follow the pros that much? Because... I, I just I I kind of uh, watched the worlds with Spencer Rivkin winning the eighth scale and the tenth scale. Oh right, he's associated, so he's probably gonna be your pick. <laughs> <laughs> mm. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, he's on fire lately, so oh, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh. What else you got, Travis? Uh, <laughs> I know you got a bunch of stuff you're just dying to ask. I'm <laughs> kind of hog. I'm hogging the airways here. <laughs> Not actually. Um, the other thing I've got is that, um, you know, you said you, we touched on it earlier. Um, you know, obviously you're getting quicker. You know, paying attention to your cars uh, made a big difference. You know, what do you think? Um, what do you think that you learned on the track, though, like while you're driving, that has made the biggest difference to you? Like, what do you think you've you've improved at the most, more than just your speed? Probably my throttle and my corner speed. How did you notice I, it? I before I could see my time definitely going down as I as I've been racing more and paying attention to the those two things those have definitely helped on the track okay yeah okay no and so, it's, sorry go ahead go ahead no go ahead you're finish what you're saying <laughs> oh I was just saying like so do you think do you think with that, then, what do you think the next biggest thing is for you to improve on? You know, what is your next focus? Um, consistency. By okay. far, consistency is eating me alive. That's, yes. that's, that's, that's so what's hard. getting me. Consistency wins races. Oh, yeah. For sure. No, absolutely. Yep. That's Especially on that surface. That's so hard. Oh, yep. yeah. Not an easy thing to learn, so no, good on you, man. That's awesome, and it's glad you know, I'm glad that you know um for sure you know what what you know where where in particular you've improved, and you know what you've got kind of ahead of you, so it kind of keeps you on track, so mm -hmm. I like that yeah do you do you have anybody that you want to give a shout out to? You want to thank anything like that? My uncle, of course. Right. For putting, bringing me to the hobby. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be doing this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He introduced you to all this and surrounded you in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Jonathan Control for helping me when we're pitting together. He's been a right. huge help. But end of outdoor season and the in this indoor season. And then. Right. Tyler Wilbur for obviously my buggy. After what happened, Tyler gave me his old buggy. Oh wow. Yeah. I did I didn't know that. Yeah. So that was pretty cool of him. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, so you got a real you got a dialed buggy out of that deal. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> his stuff's always dialed. Well, that's cool, man. So, all right, so yeah. here's the big question I'm going to pop on you. Uh -oh. Someday, there will be a time where, uh, you know, probably not for a long time, but Brett and Brenda are going to retire at some point. Mm -hmm. We're going to be like, you know what, this diehard thing's great, but this is just a lot of work. You know, I think it's time to, to pass it on. So there's okay. two parts to this question. 
first thing is going to be, one, are you going to take up that mantle or do you plan to? And the second part is, um, you know, what would your vision for it be? You know, what does what does Die Hard mean to Marcus uh, you know, when it's yours? That is a big question. Um, I I would want to carry Die Hard. Yes, I'd want to carry Die Hard farther after they retire from it. Um, I just want to keep it in the direction it is, and just keep and just let it grow. Just naturally grow and become a blossoming flower. <laughs> I like right now it. it's just right now it's a seedlet. Right now we're at the right now we're at the growing point. Oh boy, we're gonna need a bigger building. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, can it grow any bigger? That's the question. That's why we had to move to the pavilion. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for the yeah, for the we, hobby we can't, expo. We right. can't be in that um, the, the other building anymore. There's too many people. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. And what about what about the, the current location that we race at regularly? That's we're we're getting to uh, getting filled to capacity now. <laughs> oh yeah, last last race was a big entry count. Yeah. The race before that was pretty big too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I think a, a big part of that is a lot of the work that you've done. You do a lot of the the novice program, so do, which, yeah. which yeah. you know, and Elliot and and mm -hmm. and the, I know there's a couple others that that help out with as well. You're you're an integral part of that, and uh, that novice program has really really helped to grow. The, the hobby in the area, die hard, our whole community, and, and we all want to thank you for the hard work you've put into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a deal for sure. It, it, it wouldn't be able, to, the novice program wouldn't be able to be what it is without the help of Elliot, of course, Jonathan, right, and Brian Hodge is, is of course, been putting in some help as well. That's that. That's right. We got Brian as well, mm -hmm. for sure. That novice program. There, I think it's an average of twenty-five to thirty entries in the novice every single race. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's pretty cool, and you don't see that anywhere else. No. Pretty cool That's feeling very... when uh, you get new faces arrive. Almost pretty much, no, literally every single race you have a new face arrive. Yep. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, it, it's gone way since. Remember the uh, the wrestlers that were part of the first <laughs> program. I remember the wrestlers. <laughs> that's why RC University is such a big deal now. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's hugely important. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Yeah, convert the convert the uh, the novice racer into a full time. Die-hard family member. Oh yeah, for sure. Cool. So you have school tomorrow. I do have school tomorrow, but it's conference week, so we get Ooh, earlier. Oh yeah. Race. Best week. <laughs> and the next week it's Thanksgiving. So that's a short, a short week. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Are you gonna go and do some RC somewhere? Um. I don't, no, not Thanksgiving weekend. I don't believe. No, no, no. Unless it's uh, well, I think. Is there diehard? Uh, I, I don't think. Is there no, diehard that weekend? There's no diehard, but there's a rock star race down in Portland that oh, I know yeah, Brett no, went I to. Know. No, I think Brett went last year. Yeah. So I've been to one more race. Maybe you'll be going down with him. Oh, you went down to the uh, to the was it the carpet gnats or something? Uh, I don't in Albany. It, it was it was in Albany, but it was a long time ago. It was when they had the Smurf turf. 
Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that was a long yeah. time ago. Gotcha. Cool. So you're a carpet racer, and you'd prefer to race on carpet. Yes. <laughs> it's clean. It's quiet. Oh, yeah. Tires are easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're cheaper. They are a little cheap, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, that's cool, Marcus. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us and uh, letting everybody learn a little bit more about you and, and who you are. We, yeah. we appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks again, that's man. so cool. It's been an absolute honor to have you on and to race with you, and uh, I'm looking forward to many more years of it. So. Oh, yeah, me too. No, keep just uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing great, and uh, just just remember, you you had RC before you had girls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can tell them that. You tell them that. I loved RC before I loved you. Oh uh, yeah, that wouldn't go the way with her, would it? Don't, ah. let, don't let them take the RC away. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll I'll test run that. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, cool. it's, it's great talking to you, Marcus, and we're yeah. uh, we're excited to see you on Saturday, and we're gonna, definitely going to try to get Brett to do the national anthem on Saturday. I already, I already texted him about it. So, oh, you uh, did? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to do it right now too. Then do it. Cool. <laughs> well, seriously, thanks again, buddy. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's been on. a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun having you. It uh, definitely will not be the last time, so so be ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and try not to lap me on Saturday again, please. <laughs> um, I don't. Did I? I don't. When did I? Have I ever lapped you? Oh, I'm sure. It's. There's been times where you've qualified way ahead of me. Well, mm -hmm. that doesn't count. It, it counts. It totally counts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't look at you the same way I used to on the track. You're you're a hardcore racer now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, you're the real deal, man. And when you walk up onto that stand, you tell yourself that, and you'll be even further ahead. Yeah, like Lightning McQueen says, "I am speed." That's right. That's I was just it. I was just thinking about that on my way home from work today. I was like, man, someone really needs to start pulling that out at the track because that would be perfect to just lay that out every time before uh, before they go up onto the stand. Yeah. Just a quick, <laughs> I am speed. I am speed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep, man. that's me. I'm going to do it every time now. Everyone's going to look at me funny. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> What's this old guy talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes and say that out loud. <laughs> oh boy alright buddy well you have a good night alright you too alright take it easy thanks Marcus yeah. we'll talk to you soon oh, yeah bye 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 alright thank you so much Marcus always a blast you know being able to talk to all the uh, you know the young guns that we've had on definitely won't be the last time we do this and uh, you know Marcus is just a great example you know of uh, the up and comers you know, that have really just solid footing in the RC industry. And, uh, again, we can't wait to see, uh, you know, where he continues to take it. And we'll be part of Die Hard for a very long time. So now on to our final two guests of the night. Uh, tonight we have Brendan and Dylan Bartlett. Uh, anybody on the NCT circuit should know who the Bartlett brothers are. Um, very bright, very bright young men. Um pretty quick you know they've gotten but they've both gotten very fast in a very short amount of time um a lot of brotherly love between them in terms of trying to uh you know help one another and uh you know push themselves kind of further and further into their uh, own rc careers so bartlett brothers how are we doing tonight guys good how are you They're doing fantastic how's the weather out there which um, one of us? Cold. Uh, I guess yeah, you're both in, you're both in different places now. One of one's better than the other, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> um. So who's in California? I am. You are. 
people can't see us. You got to remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> we we have uh, Dylan and Brandon Brandon Bartlett on the show tonight today, and uh, you guys are spread out. One one of you's in California, and and one's at home in Montana. Yep. yep. Montana. Do you guys have snow in Montana yet? Um, we did, but right now it's kind of like on a break, so it's like melted. Uh, okay, so you're out practicing on your outdoor track then? Uh, no, it's still kind of <laughs> muddy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but... Oh, jeez. So, you guys have really come onto the NCT scene this year, um, and really have made a name for yourselves. You've really uh, opened some eyes and uh, gotten some good results. How long have you you both been racing? I've been racing since, well, I originally started when I was like eight, and then we didn't drive for probably like 10 years. He didn't so, drive. Yeah. <laughs> and Dylan had just started last year. That was his first year. First year. Okay. And then this year, uh, you've moved in. And did you do any of the NCTs last year? Uh, uh, yeah. We you did, did all of them? Yeah, but uh, last year I only raced two-wheel drive, and um, and then I started in Nitro at Walla Walla. So what fourth round? Fourth round of NCT. Straight from straight from t- two wheel drive to nitro buggy. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's quite a jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We told that's them it awesome. was time. Very cool. So what? Uh, you guys got some good results this year. What? Uh, what was? Where did you both finish up for the year? In what classes? Um. I won the mini truggy championship, which was just stupid, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I won that car out of the raffle at Pasco, which I didn't even know I'd won until little Chucky came running into the trailer screaming at me, telling me I won a car because I hadn't even manually entered the raffle. I was automatically entered into it because I raced three rounds last year. So that was cool. So I won that, and then... I'd never, we went to Spokane with it because I had to race it the next round. And then I'd never really ran tent scale before. And then we had the Teak and electronics. And then I had gone out and I just didn't have it set up right. So I didn't even get any practice that whole weekend. And then went out and TQ'd and then won the whole weekend. So then I was wow. like, oh man, maybe I should just run this thing for fun. <laughs> and to be honest, I didn't even work on it until Yakima. I literally only like aired it off, never retail anything, and they're like, "Oh, you should be air like redoing the shocks and bleeding them every run." And I was like, "It's been like five race weekends, and I haven't even touched this thing." <laughs> you guys are gonna hurt some feelings, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> like all my other cars, I've like meticulously like it is torn down every single time before an NCT and like knew everything. So wow, like, that car though, I just didn't. I don't want to say I didn't really care about it, but, like, <laughs> it was just kind of on the back burner all the time. It was just kind of fun to go and race it. But yeah. And Nitro Truck, this was my first year in Truggy as well, and I think I finished, like, ninth overall. Wow. Which was, like, okay. But the last two rounds, I just had terrible luck, so. Top 10's, top ten's impressive. There's a yeah. lot of competition in the NCTs. Yeah. And then I think I was top 20 in Buggy. I think yeah. I was like just outside the top ten. I think it was like fourteenth or something. Wow! And I, I I know that we had a good battle at one race. Yeah, Burlington. It, did, it didn't end up in your favor, but no, it, <laughs> it, it was. Uh, it, you ran out of fuel or something, correct? Yeah. Yeah. On like yeah, the last lap because we got <laughs> the extra lap. Yep, that's right. <laughs> yep. Uh, not the way I not the way I want to get the bump, but yeah. I'll take it. That was probably the hardest B main I've literally ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, it was it was stacked for sure. Yeah, the entire fifteen minutes or whatever it was was just ridiculous. <laughs> I remember I remember watching the end of that, and my heart just sinking. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, just the car just drifting to the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no! I knew too because like. 
I could feel my car getting lean, so I was like, oh, I got to go super soft. So then I, like, double singled, and I was putting around, and then I barely went to give it a little to get over the step up, and I just felt it, like, nothing, and I was like, oh, God. I just <laughs> knew it was, like, done at that point, and I was just, yeah, that was frustrating. Because I think I went back to, like, dead last probably, like, two times. <clears throat> And yeah. got knocked off the track to, like, the complete other side by somebody <laughs> that was on the wrong side of the track originally. So That wasn't me, was it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <it was> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to make sure. <laughs> well, now, that, now that you bring it up, it might have been you. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Dylan, what about you? Um. So... I ended up winning the Sportsman E buggy E buggy championship. Wow, that's and that's the that, biggest class in the N- NCT all year long. Yeah. So that's that's quite a feat. Yeah, and I won it by like two points. Oh, I was or close. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I finished second in electric truck, right behind Rob Sorgenin. Yeah, you like the electric truggy. Uh, yeah, I did, um, but at this last race, at the fallout, I was running nitro truck instead of electric truck, so okay. it, was, it was pretty good. I like nitro truck a lot. The uh, Which do you prefer, electric or nitro? Uh, the entire year, I like preferred electric because I just had really bad luck in nitro, but um, nitro truck went really good at fallout, but... I Maybe definitely. Beat me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that brings up another question: Who's faster? Dylan's faster. Dylan's faster. Yeah. <laughs> he's been racing a year, and he's faster than you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Easy. He's just got blistering pace. It's just the only thing I have going for me is the consistency. <laughs> you guys need to do that. Uh, two people, one radio thing. Yeah. Come out. Yeah. Race that would be that. so hard. I think, I think they're no doing. Matter, if I was manning the trigger or the wheel, I'd just be too slow to react for whatever Dylan's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I try to drive his cars like even in our backyard, and I it literally looks like I've got the transmitter wheel in my mouth, and I'm just out there. It literally is the, probably the <laughs> ugliest thing you've ever seen. Oh, man. It looks like a two year old that has the transmitter backwards, and it's just going. I can't even drive his car straight. I don't know what wow. it is. And then he drives my car like three corners and he puts the transmitter down because he's like, this thing is absolute garbage. I know what <laughs> you mean, though. I, I absolutely know what you mean. Every time I drive one of my dad's cars or vice versa, we're both like, man, this is undrivable. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> they can't do it. Well, it's just like, I feel like every time I drive Brennan's car, it just doesn't have the like support out of the corner because like I'm so hard on it out of the corner and he's like kind of conservative. And so it just, like, steps out all the time. That makes sense. Yeah, Dylan's diff oils are definitely a lot higher than mine most of the time. Right. Except right. in truck. Yeah, except in truck. For whatever yeah. reason, Dylan runs, like, water in his truck diffs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously. So, yeah, so who, who does ahead. all the, the setup and, and work on your, your cars? Do you guys do it yourself? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Last year not... I wrenched a lot on Dylan's cars, but this year I told him that he's got to do more of the work. Yeah. <laughs> and do really you think what they used to be? Do you think that's making you faster now that you understand how everything works? Definitely. Like Bren's a huge help because, like, honestly, it's like the entire knowledge of like me and him because he's watched like every Adam Drake video, everything on it, and. Like, I could just ask him a question, and he'll, like, answer it to the best of his ability. So, it's definitely <laughs> so, nice having Brendan there. <laughs> yeah. I know that Brendan does does some stuff for Kyle Johnson as well. You work on his car a bunch or once in a yeah. while? Yeah, I wrench on his car probably more than mine at the races sometimes. Yeah. So, you, <laughs> you enjoy the wrenching side of it and the, the tuning? Yeah, I don't mind it. I, you spend way more time working on the stuff than driving it. This is true. Like, <laughs> even most of the time at home, I'll just 
like Dylan will be at school and I'll get his cars ready. And then by the time he gets home for school, we'll just be down at the track for a couple hours and just practicing, trying to figure out where he can make it better. Yeah. So you can so. always make your car better. This is true. This is true. You know, you always, you're always working on it. Yep. For sure. So you, you guys have built a track in your backyard this year. Yes. And do you get to spend much time out there doing laps? Um, in the summer, we had quite a bit of time. But once it comes like, stuff? once it comes like end of August, it just starts raining a lot, and it just it's like it will rain and then it will stop for like three days, and by the t- time the puddles are like gone off the track, it's like it will rain again. So it's like right. Right, so uh, your dad, I always see him wrenching and doing stuff. Is is he, I I know he glues a lot of tires and stuff for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he kind of banned us from gluing tires. (laughs) Have you had some tires come off the wheels (laughs) when you do it yourself? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then he got a bad batch of glue, and then all of our tires came undone. So then Uh, the glue was fired. Uh, Yeah, that, that. That happens, and it sucks, because it's usually too late before you figure it out. Oh, yeah. Especially with, like, since we had, like, eight cars running at any given moment this year, it was, like, not just one set of tires are getting glued up <laughs> every time. So it's That's like, true. You have, like, you have a fleet tests. over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so are you going to continue running multiple classes like that? Uh, no. At the fallout, I only ran nitro, buggy, and truck, and that's how i want it to stay because originally i was running e-truggy as well at the beginning of the year and e-buggy so i had all four classes and then i had sold the e-truggy and then got the mini truck yeah (laughs) literally the first race back which was pasco i won the mini truck so it was like annoying almost because i was like i just got rid of a fourth class and here i am but then i stuck it out the rest of the year and it was good but uh, for now, I'm just going to stick to the two nitro classes. It's just a lot of work and then being able to like help other people and just even just working on your own stuff between rounds. It was like every time we got back to the pits, there was another race up or something, especially <laughs> in the electric classes with the triple A mains. It's just nonstop. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's why mean. I, that's why I run one car. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I'm too old and too busy to work on multiple cars, multiple classes, marshalling, pitting, yeah. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it gets to yeah, be too it's much. It's definitely a lot of work. Yeah. So, yeah. So what, what's your favorite classes? What What do you prefer to drive the most? I definitely, Nitro Buggy, just hands down. That's my yeah. favorite. And then right behind that's Nitro Truck. Mm-hmm. I've never it, really been an electric person. Right. What about you, Dylan? E buggy. E buggy's your favorite? Oh yeah. Even even over nitro buggy? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a different answer. That's not what I expected. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say nitro trucks like right behind it because I really like the truck. Honestly, yeah. it's just a lot more forgiving, and it, in my opinion, it just suits my driving style a lot more. Um, but we've definitely, we definitely have seen a, like, pretty big improvement this year in Nitro Buggy. hmm But, yeah, I would still stick with the buggy though. Yeah, what, what do you guys do in the winter? Do you run any 10th scale indoors or anything like that? No. no. It's kind of our off season. Right. But at the same time, it's nice, because you get to, like, regroup, because from... Literally, our year started in February, and then the fallout was the ending of it. And usually, either one or two weekends a month, we're out of state. So it's just constantly busy, especially the beginning of the year. It was like winter rage to DNC, and then right after DNC, we literally drove from California to the hangover. And then after that, you go home and have like a week and a half, two weeks, and then Pasco, and we went straight from Pasco to Silver State and then home from Silver State, and then you have, like, Spokane, and then we were going to run Manufacturer's Cup the weekend after Spokane, but 
by the time we got there, it was like we'd already done so much racing. We were like, we need a break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you so you guys are really serious about it. You're doing some of the big races down south, and yeah. and put putting a lot of time and effort into it. Yeah, yeah. And it's awesome. fun, but it, it is to, like after Silver State, I drove all the way home, which is like 20 hours, and my dad yeah. stayed back in Vegas and worked. And then so our like, truck, our fuel filter, like, went bad, and we had oh, a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then my dad had to drive two hours to come fix it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, that that brings up something I wanted to talk about. Um, how many times, uh, Brendan, have you pulled away from a gas pump with... <laughs> <laughs> oh with God. the hose still inserted in the car. <laughs> More times than I'd like to talk about. And that's actually the only one. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I will never forget that. That was hilarious. And you and I both. In, of course, if it, it was in a PT Cruiser. Yeah. Of <laughs> yes. all cars, it's in a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, we're never gonna let you live that one down. Oh no! Oh yeah, I, I, I really never heard about that. this. <laughs> yeah, it was right after RCGP. Yep. Oh yep. man, you that was that was like the Sunday night, wasn't it? Of RCGP. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> yeah. we just we had just left the uh, Chinese restaurant where we said goodbye to all you guys. And then right. Kenny needed gas, too. So we just went to the gas station right there. And then uh, the incident happened. <laughs> the incident. <laughs> We're going to refer to it from now on as the incident. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it just had a breakaway valve on it. So I just ran back over and reconnected it and then got out of there. <laughs> 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 oh man I'll never forget seeing that picture you standing there <laughs> God, <laughs> I'm sorry to bring this up in public but that was hilarious <laughs> no it was honestly pretty funny yeah. I was like oh my god <laughs> uh, normally they charge you to reconnect it and stuff but you just you got out of there pretty quick <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah I love it. Uh, so this is kind of like the atmosphere that that goes on in your pits at all the races. It's always laughing and joking, and you guys are having a good time, and you know, hanging out with with Kenny and Chuck and Kyle and everybody. Um, is 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 that part of what keeps you attracted to uh, going and doing all this racing? Most definitely. definitely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it would be. Uh... A lot more boring, and it'd probably be burnout with like without having that, right? Because it just yeah, makes yeah. it so much more like lighthearted and everything off the track. Yep. And, like since we do it so much during the week leading up to the races, and just like all the work and preparation, and like always practicing and stuff, it's nice to like it's almost backwards, but to like go to the track and then relax. Mm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We yeah, still I get know. to still get to go out and do it and like put everything there that we just practice for, but then at the same time get to like hang out with everybody and just kind of gather once a month and just right, have your right. racing family, I guess. With the yeah. the short amount of time that I've been I I've been pitting with you guys and hanging out, um, I've noticed that. Even if there's a bad run here and yeah. there, I, I don't see anybody coming back to the pits and, and throwing stuff and, and yelling and screaming. Everyone, um, it's understandable to be upset, but there's there's no temper tantrums or anything like that going on. And that's that's really refreshing to see. It's, oh, it's yeah. really good. You, how, how do you guys handle that when you have a bad run? Or um, Well, like... We race so much, it's almost like there's always another race anyways, but also just act, I don't know, I feel like that's just a waste of energy, where like, there's no, acting like that, or like freaking out and throwing stuff doesn't really get you anywhere, or like, you can just come off the sand and be like, 
what do you do to make it better instead mm-hmm. and like try to fix it i mean if it's a main it's like yeah it sucks but then you just like need to take away from that and make sure it doesn't happen again or like right i mean sometimes it's not your fault like if you get hit and break or something but then it's like you just have to chalk it up to it not being your fault anyway so what are you going to do about it it's kind of if it's out of your control why stress over it you can't really change anything about that so it's not worth the like i said the energy or anything right that's a great attitude to have and it uh, it'll it'll take you a lot further in the hobby and, and in the the sport if you consider it a sport um to have the, that mentality for sure oh yeah definitely yeah. I think just overall, we're always a lot cooler headed than most. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Um, So you've got the track, you're practicing, you've got uh, some time off this winter. What are you going to do with your time off? Um, Sell all of Dylan's cars. Oh, well, I I wasn't going to bring that up. I was going to let you guys bring that up. But since you brought it up, what what are your plans for next year uh, as far as equipment you're running and that sort of thing? Do you want to announce that? Um, Nothing's really set in stone yet. But as it sits, uh, Dylan's 99 percent not going to be running associated next year. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) <laughs> everything else is going to stay the same, like tires and fuel and everything else. But going into next year, we have we have some opportunities that were presented to us. And uh, we're just going to see what's the best option for the both of us for next year and uh, moving forward. And speaking of next year, what are your plans for next year? What kind of what races are you planning on going to? Um, the same thing, probably the same schedule as last year. Just Chase um, Basher Cup. Yeah, we'd like to definitely try to make Manufacturer's Cup this year. Um, we wanted to do the barn race last year. It just depends on timing, but we'll always be attending every NCT round, and then we still plan to do DNC and Silver State and stuff like that. Right. And are, are you both in school? I am I, graduated. Yeah, I graduated last year. All right. I, I mean, one of the first questions we should have asked was, how old are you two? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 19. Okay. I'm 15. 15. Okay. So, uh, Brendan, you've graduated. Mm-hmm. And do you have plans to go to college or any of that kind uh, of stuff? I've just mostly been working in the shop with my dad and stuff. But if I were to ever go back to school, I'd probably just get, like, a mechanical engineering degree. It's pretty right. general and broad. And, like, in most of any fields, that's kind of useful. Right. And, and uh, Dylan, what about you? You're in, in which grade? Um, I'm a freshman in high school. Okay. All right. How's high school treating you? Oh, it's pretty good. It's definitely a different change of pace than middle school, but... I right. like it. Right. Have you discovered girls yet? Last year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you're still interested in RC at this point? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> Cause, That's uh, like my number one priority right now, though. Oh, good. Good. Because girls are nothing but trouble. Yep. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely learn that one. <laughs> Good, good. <coughs> Travis, you were going to say something. What were you... Uh, what yeah, were you so um, we didn't put out a questions thread ahead of this episode because we don't release the episode for almost another week. So um, what we did is went back to the first edition of these uh, Young Guns episodes that we had uh, back in early September when we had uh, you know Chuck and Chuck Jr., Charlie and Derek... And yeah. uh, a lot of people chimed in and asked some really good questions on that show. So we figured that we'll just roll the same questions on to you guys. Because I'm very curious to hear what you guys uh, have to say, given how much you guys have traveled around. So uh, first question I've got for you is, uh, what drivers do you look up to locally and internationally? And then yeah, each of you guys take a turn if you want. Um, I would say locally... 
definitely Kyle. Um, you know, Amen. He's, just, he's just he just brings that like laughter to the track and like even if I'm having a bad run, he just like roasts me about it and then actually like talk and then talks to me saying, you know, you'll get him. You'll get him next time, you know. He's definitely who I looked up to. And then um internationally I would say Adam Drake. Okay. okay. Brandon, what about you? Uh locally is definitely like Jackson and Kyle. I think those two guys are definitely always just on point. Jackson and the electric classes is just always for the past like two years has just dominated them. And is oh yeah. He's just robotic consistency. But then the the same goes for Kyle, and his pace is just above everybody's at the moment. I think uh, here in the next year or two, we'll definitely see people starting to get faster and getting closer, for sure, in the NCT. Um, And then internationally, probably uh, Drake and, like, Mayfield and uh, Tasman. Those are probably my top three. And just to take, like, a little away from everybody. Because, like, Drake's probably one of the hardest working people in the industry, I'd think. And then Mayfield just has, like, no matter how his car is, it's just always blistering fast. But then, like, Tessman's always just so smooth and calculated <laughs> and controlled. Or, like, if you could figure out a median between those three guys, they'd probably be the best there is. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, no, I think uh, no, that's a great answer. It's definitely, uh, you know, you guys have seen those people drive in person a lot too, you know, so being able oh, to yeah. take that and <laughs> definitely find the little things uh, between all of them that you can, like, really attach yourselves to. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's definitely a good, uh, good way to make a step forward. Um, and then kind of the segue from that question, um, out of the top-level drivers you guys have seen um, – who do you enjoy watching the most and who do you think that your style um, resembles the most? Um, That's a low one, to, I know. We had to think yeah. about this one. <laughs> um, well, the people I enjoy to like watch the most is definitely like Dylan and Little Chucky. I always try to go out there and watch Little Chucky because... Uh, he definitely has his weekends where, like, he can just, he can wheel. He can wheel a car for sure. Mm-hmm. I Like, in Walla Walla on Mini Chuggy, he was, like, up to third for a little while. Yeah. And then, like, even in E-Buggy, he's gotten way better. In E-Truggy, he's getting there. And uh, just for basically his, like, first full year. I mean, for the first, like, three races, he did. He was, like, changing between all sorts of cars. Like, in Pasco, I think he ran a B6. And Mini Truggy, and then like in Spokane, he ran a B64, and then right. so he was like all over the map. But like the last three races, he had like the same classes, and he's yeah. definitely getting there. And just for how young he is, he's already pretty, pretty disciplined. I think that's the most important thing in like younger kids and stuff is just the discipline of driving because it's like I think that's the hardest part because everybody just wants to like punch it and go fast. Or, like, in reality, the more disciplined you are, you'll just eventually get faster and faster. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's so. the, the amount of maturity that kid puts out on the track is insane. I mean, he's going to be stupid good as he gets older. Like, it's going to be ridiculous. So, and what, I, what I've what i enjoyed is watching, you know, um, we've kind of had this new wave of like fast kids in the NCTs, you know, we've had you guys, we have uh, Chuck jr. And then we've had people we've had on the show before. And, um, you know, you guys are just getting better, mm. you know, like you guys have just continued to improve and it's you're not going to be long at all. You're before. scaring us. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to be long at all before, you know, it's, it's the, the top of every class you guys are racing. And that's the thing is like what I, what I particularly like about you both is that you guys, are so immersed in in it off the track and what i mean by that is like being conscious of setup being conscious of you don't know the little uh intricacies and nuances that you know you guys have to pay attention to even to the point of working on other people's cars 
-hmm. you know most yeah. you know most people that are racing your age that are good you know that are really good are having everything done for them so yeah. um you know that's something that i think is super cool that you guys are doing and you know that's i think that's a already a big positive and why you guys have uh you know gotten so good so fast for sure you know is that you guys care and that's evident every yeah. place you go to it's definitely yeah. putting in the the time and effort that makes the biggest difference and just like learning learning your setups and adjustments and stuff is really important and like sometimes you just there's things that you just can't do setup wise and you're just gonna have to drive around it um yeah once the i mean like on paper you could have like the perfect car but in reality if you're always chasing the perfect car i don't think you'll really ever find it or like you just need to get your car like as good as you can and then and like then drive it. it yeah drive it to where it's fast oh yeah it needs mean... to be fast and consistent at the same time and not on edge because you can't drive at 100% all the time especially for like a half hour main i'd rather have my car like a little more numb than like aggressive oh sure well can you, you know, guys hear me yeah yeah oh, okay all right yeah, I mean, like you've said, it's like, you know, the car can always be better. And it's, you know, as, as setup is always a balance, right? So, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, like you said, you can either make the car super quick, but really hard to drive consistently, or yeah. you can make the car super consistent, but not quick and you're off pace. Yeah. So it's always finding, it's yeah. always being able to recognize, you know, where yeah. you're at in relation to that. Yeah. And like you said, especially for a run where like it's 30 minutes, you know. And you're like, all right, well, not only do I have to set up the car to feel good, but it needs to feel good for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think a lot of people tend to miss that, especially when it comes to like, you know, because people will just look at tire choice. Yeah. Well, they won't really think about, well, how's yeah. the rest of the car going to react to it as yeah. the time goes on? We oh, sure. You got to, you got to, you got to bring that up, huh? After my last yeah. race. <sighs> <laughs> Usually we don't mess with tires that much. By Q2 or 3, we usually... We don't... Honestly, we don't really change our cars much. Um, yeah. With the ability to have the practice track and stuff, we've really found what works, and we don't really stray much from that. Um, maybe yeah. a few adjustments here or there, or like moving a link somewhere, but nothing major, really. And... Tire wise, it's usually just always hole shots or slide locks, and like if those tires work, we go from M threes and qualifying to usually like an S three for the mains. So it's yeah. uh, even if your car's like good, most of the time I wouldn't really change it before the main because it could just be worse. Yeah, and it's like if it's good and you just put the harder tire on to last the thirty minutes, so it doesn't fade really bad. You're already going into it expecting what it's going to be like which i most of the time you'll just be better off that way right but oh, i mean if awesome. it's like terrible or something you obviously should do something about it yeah <laughs> like that is true for me i ran in electric truck and electric buggy i ran the same diff setup all year that's crazy which yeah, is cool though like mean, that's well, awesome if yeah. you guys can be that comfortable yeah or for me, at least, Brendan changed a little bit, but... Yeah. But that's, like, the craziest thing to me is Dylan ran the same exact setup. Like, his e-truggy literally did not change from winter rage all the way until Yakima. Right. The last race he ever did. And it's like, we raced so many different surfaces and temperatures, like, not even the shock oil changed. It was the same, no matter what. From winter rage to DNC to silver state and like yeah the the mip pistons are just the best thing well, i've ever yeah. driven honestly they just make it so easy because usually we'd always have to change shock oils and or you're drilling your pistons different or something but like with those mips that just made it i don't know what it is but it's like magic because <laughs> mm -hmm. like every surface it's good and like in the bumps it's just even better Especially That's like DNC and Silver State, it was like brutal. So, having an easy car to drive on those surfaces definitely made the NCT uh, a lot easier. Like going into those, just from going to those two races alone. So you yeah. learn a lot. You learn a lot by going down to those races. Uh, oh yeah, 
Yeah. It's just like, because like you have to find the pace, but then you also have to really, you got to really have it dialed in and there's no, no room for error. So you're not messing with tires or anything. You like pick a tire and you pretty much just stick to it and you need to kind of work around that. Right. Too. And it's like at Silver State, it was so like by the time main day came around, it was ridiculous. It looked like they just tarred the track. It was black. And then it was like super, there was holes literally to the pavement. So it's like you had ridiculous grip with just craters. Mm-hmm. And it's like it, That's when it like got to the point where there wasn't much setup involved at that point. Because like you'd worked on your car throughout those five days leading up to that. So you got it like as close as you pretty much could, but then you had to basically just drive around all of that stuff. Yeah. Like, the one to the pavement would literally just swallow your entire car. Yeah. So it's like if you hit that, you were in you were in big trouble. That was brutal. Yeah. How do you, so? Okay. How how? That's something that you guys you know. I mean, no one has really dealt with that on a consistent basis like that that in particular through people for a lot of loops how do you guys as you know drivers individually attack something like that like you know if, if there's a particular spot or section or something you're unfamiliar with that's really giving you trouble you know what is the thought process you put into it to try and you know overcome that difficulty or do you just send it which is an acceptable answer also for me at least i just dive in head first um just, yeah, Dylan's yeah. always Dylan's driving style is just what you call punched. <laughs> Fearless. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I think there's like a method to his madness most of the time though, because he his like car placement and control and stuff is like so good that he can kind of just go around stuff that fast and like, right. or he just goes through it and just however his car comes out of it, his car comes out of it, I guess, and he just lives with it. And, like, sometimes he just does stuff that I just don't even understand. It's literally stupid. Like that thing in each ruggy at Walla Walla? Yeah. When he beat Rob, (laughs) literally the entire pits were just screaming. Because it was, like, the stupidest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Because on the last lap, Dylan was, like, probably four car lengths behind him. And he quadded over Rob with, like, three quarters to go and won the freaking race. And I, and I was, like, standing there just going, what the heck just happened? Like, almost nobody was, like, quadding that thing the entire weekend. And then he just went for it. So an absolute hero move. So that was, like, yeah. Everybody <laughs> was just jumping and screaming. Yeah. First time that Rob had been beaten in, like, two years. That's crazy. Yeah, it was so crazy. Kyle spilled some of his white claw, so that's how you know it was. <laughs> that's how you know it was crazy. That's real funny. No, oh, that's yeah. awesome though. I mean, what a what a way, right? Oh yeah. If so there's a, way, if there's a way. How do you compare the uh, big races like NCT or uh, DNC and Silver, Silver State, State to to our races here? At the NCTs? Um, um. The way that I look at most of those events is they're, like, strictly just, like, events. I mean, they're five days long. They're there to, like, put on a show. I mean, that's why, like, everybody from around the world's there. Like, that's, like, most of the guys that aren't in the premier class are there to, like, have fun. And then on Sunday, you watch the pros because that's like what they're there to do Where yep. like nct is like no matter what is like everybody's just there having a good time and everything and it's much more relaxed, relaxed like relaxed and just lighthearted, and everybody's just there kind of hanging out they're doing their own thing you know yeah and it's good and it's also a lot different, too, because we have 10 scale and 8 scale. So it's like two different crowds together. There's not a whole lot of people that race like both classes religiously. Like you have a lot of the guys that are strictly 10 scale. And then, I mean, like Jack, but I guess he went 8 scale e-buggy this year. But a lot of the guys that race a lot of 10 scale classes are like their bread and butter is 10 scale. Where like guess... the big events and stuff, it's all 8 scale. So... 
All right. Now, how's the atmosphere compare between between the big races down south and the and the NCTs up here? Um, it's a lot more serious down south, that's for sure. But it's also like the mecca of RC. So, like, most of the best people, at least in the states, are like from California or Arizona. And like, there's a lot of people back east, obviously, that are super fast. But like, most of the manufacturers and stuff are like here, like associated and Mugen and stuffs in Lake Forest, uh, Pro Lines right there in Banning. So like, everybody is kind of coagulated down here where like they race each other all the time between like jbrl and just like all these different sorts of races around here so it's like the competition's way more stiff and then like all of those guys still attend the same events and then outsiders coming in it's kind of a whole different atmosphere to where like if you didn't live down here and race with that it's like completely different Mm -hmm. or like if you kind of grew up around that you don't you probably wouldn't realize it as much because you live it day in and day out right right so which do you prefer which do you like you like the serious you know hardcore um or i think do you... it's good to have both yeah i definitely think it's good I to most, have both yeah i most definitely wouldn't want to race dnc's and silver states year round but to go to like two or three of those events every year it it's fun um I mean, like, Silver State and stuff, Kyle's there, so we didn't really, we just pitted with Kyle and Kenny at Silver State, so it wasn't too much of a difference from, like, NCT and stuff, at least just not having Chuck and stuff there kind of sucked, obviously, but um, just sticking with that same group, I think, kind of helps, and just kind of keeping to yourselves, I guess, but at the same time, you can go in and, like, hang out with everybody, and then... When you go to NCT, I think you definitely notice it more, like racing those races back to back, how much more relaxed the NCT is and stuff. But I think it is nice to go to those big events because you can just learn so much so quickly just because yeah. of the sheer amount of people there and like the caliber of drivers there is like you can just take in so much information within like five days that it's kind of cool to go and do that. Right. So what are your goals for this year as far as results and such? Mm, I definitely what, like to make realistically. I definitely like to make top 10 in both nitro classes. Um, do it again in truck and then definitely have a more solid year in nitro buggy this year. Right. And and Dylan, what about you? Um for me, I would say Top 10 in all classes, just because I'm moving to Expert E-Buggy and Nitro Truggy, and those are a lot, you know, stiffer classes, so I'll definitely have to drive with more, I wouldn't say filter, but just, you know. I don't really know how to explain it. Just like more conservative. <laughs> yeah, more conservative. That's right. That's right. I well, I'm I'm glad I don't have to contend with either of you in the forty plus class for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got like another twenty one years, so Oh good, I'm safe for a little while. <laughs> yep. Awesome. So do you have uh any sponsors or anything you want to give a shout out to? Any any people you want to thank or or that kind of thing? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, everybody at uh, definitely Adam and like everybody else at Mugen, they gave me the opportunity to be on the team, and that like helped out a lot. And just having him in my back pocket at all times for any questions or just help for anything, and he's taking care of like all of our motors for the past two years, just like break ins and maintenance and stuff. So that's like a huge help to our program because, I mean, especially in nitro classes, a lot of people like the most common problem is people having engine problems. And like a lot of the times it is due to like improper tuning and stuff. But then like also people will like run motors for like 10 gallons and not even replace the bearings or anything in them. So it's like you got to stay on top of that stuff. So like having that as like a super solid thing in our program helps a lot. And then like Kenny 
at MKS. Uh, he helped me out with servos a lot. Like, mm-hmm. And then Mike at High Tech, he's helped us out. Like we run the transmitters and stuff, and then Dylan runs the High Tech servos, and their customer service yeah. is always awesome. Yeah, Mike then, at High Tech is a huge help. Awesome. And then Daniel at ProLine. Especially. Daniel's the man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Daniel is definitely the man. Artist really I cannot RCG. believe he was yep. gluing that many tires at RCGP. I know. That I, was crazy. When I got there, I like walked up to the back of the van, and I just immediately said, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't even racing. I just saw his poor thumbs were just mutilated. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah. my Lord. And then... <laughs> That's pretty much. I think that's pretty much everybody. Yeah, yeah. And how's how's the dynamic? You know, I know I know a lot of brothers. It you know kind of get at each other, and it's um, you know there's a lot of arguing and fighting and going on. But how uh, how's the dynamic between the two of you at the track? Um, there's it's been a. It's good. It's usually always good, but when I was last year. Um, he like threw my car on my face because (laughs) (laughs) uh, just because like, you know, he strives to watch me do good. And, you know, I, I almost feel like he cares about my results more than his just, you know, just because he's just that type of person, you know, I, Definitely love my brother. <laughs> that, that's really cool. And, and I, I knew what the answer to that was going to be. I just had to ask it and get it out oh, there. Yeah. But um, I mean, sometimes when he's an idiot, you just got to tell him he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's always going to be like the same. Because like, that, even on the headset or anything, like he'll get frustrated during a race. But it's like, I just tell him that he's got to just salvage the run for what it is. Because it's not like we can really fix anything at the moment right but like definitely um just teaching him everything that i like basically can and making his cars the best they can be i think putting in all the work we did this year really paid off for dylan for sure yeah um, he's like dylan. i mean as a first year coming into eight scale he's already running at an expert level i mean it showed at the fallout he qualified he was literally pole in the b for e-buggy just due to bad luck and one qualifier and that was super stacked with all the people there that weekend that was probably some of the most stacked competition we've seen in a while up here and like led the entire b didn't even make a mistake made it into the a and then a nitro truck led the entire b and made it into the a for that and yeah, which I was like that. tenth in the B in Nitro yeah. Truck. So <laughs> it's like he's definitely progressed as a driver so quickly that like he's already getting to that level. Which right. is like good to see that all the work and everything's paying off and like Yeah. Probably the most memorable thing out of this entire year of racing was at Silver State, Dylan had started think he was like sixth or something in e buggy and like the sportsman class down there is absolutely ridiculous because in the nitro class the like top three guys paces were all like b main for the pro class like they were beating <laughs> kyle oh yeah so it's like how is that even it's just it, absurd and like on the first lap dylan got hit so hard that it literally hit him across three lanes and his body was like folded in Mm. and then he was like half a lap down and there's no triple a mains it's like a one and done and he literally on the last lap passed like three guys to get onto the podium yeah and i was standing he was so he was in sportsman e-buggy a and then i was in the intermediate e-buggy a so i was in line behind him on the stand and i just saw his knees shaking so bad and i was sitting there watching it on the big screen over the stand and then everybody just started like screaming 
And then I saw Dylan turn around and he was like almost in tears. And then I was freaking screaming at the top of my lungs, just jumping up and down and everybody was freaking out. And that was probably <laughs> like one of the coolest things that I had ever seen. It was like going from dead last to a podium in five minutes. Wow. And, um, he was one of three associated or just people that drove associated cars in the entire event to get a trophy and Rivkin and then uh, AJ Ernest Schumacher Schumacher were the only other ones. Right. So wow. that was like the coolest thing ever. That's well, awesome. Br- Brendan, I, and stuff taken. I, I got to say, Brendan, it's, it's really cool to see how much passion you have for your brother's racing and how, how self selfless you are about it and and encouraging him and helping him to uh you know potentially beat you oh yeah i already you know, know it's coming there'll probably it, be a day <laughs> where i just say it's time to hang it up and just become the mechanic for him man but, you uh, you talk you, you talk like you're 45 years old like me but <laughs> <laughs> um you know you've got a lot of racing to do yourself so yeah um, it's but still, it, I definitely enjoy it a lot, but, um, it's very, I ad- enjoy driving and everything, but at the same time, it's like, I almost like helping other people do better. Right. Like more. It's like super, I don't know. I would just enjoy it a lot and like being able to help anybody the best I can and like just putting in the time and stuff and. I think it's honestly made the relationship between Dylan and I like better between the past two years because we can just like, I know it sounds like stupid, but communicating over like toy cars and everything has just like made everything better because we can just sit down and like talk to each other about something that's, we both understand very deeply. So like, it just makes it easy. And like, he can sit down and tell me like what he wants or needs or what the car needs to do or mm-hmm. just will pick my brain on something and say like what if i did this versus this and then so you 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 guys don't really have that competitiveness be- between yourselves then you're you're more supportive of each other than than trying to beat each other yeah yeah i'd say so that's pretty I rare mean, we've gotten a lot closer in like speed and pace and stuff definitely these last couple races but it's like at the end of the day, I think that uh, Dylan will always end up being faster in the long run. <laughs> it's just like that new, like kids are just so fast now that it's insane. Because at yeah. 19, 19, you're so old. You're so washed out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Like I definitely like a lot quicker than a lot of other people and like most older guys, but just even like from my age and Kyle's age to like Dylan and little Chucky and like even like Fee Long and stuff, just like that new breed of drivers is just so they're like always so far ahead of the car that it's like almost that it just feels like snail speed to them. But then to us, we're like, how does a car even go that fast around a freaking corner? What, what do you attribute that to? Do you play a lot of uh, vil- uh, video games, Dylan? Um, Oh yeah. I did a lot before I started driving, but recently it's kind of just, like, fallen off a little bit because I've been more focused on, you know, bettering, better my driving, you know? Right. But, um, yeah, as much as I can, honestly, if I'm not doing, like, schoolwork or stuff in the shop um, or driving, it's pretty much video games. Right. That's awesome. You guys both work with your dad in the shop? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're learning about machining and, and engineering and all that kind of stuff with the hands-on thing instead of going to school to learn it. Yeah. Um, not so much the, like, programming side because, like, that's so... so this, uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of the work we do in the shop, though, is, like, it's almost, like, all RC-related. Mm-hmm. And, like... Just the amount of work that we have to do between races, almost all our times utilized between that. Like, Dylan, like, usually our orders of tires are two cases, like, so big that you can barely carry them. 
so like half the time Dylan will just like chuck up all of our wheels on the lathes and then like sand all the beads and stuff and pre-clean them all. We do a lot of uh, prep work beforehand just to make the race weekend easier. Man, this is my problem. I don't have a machine shop. <laughs> I need I need to put my wheels in a lathe now. Is that the latest thing? That's <laughs> the quickest way to do it. I mean, holy cow! If we're at the track and we don't have it done, you just take and a Dremel piece of with it. Yeah, yeah, or Dremel. That's Dremel it. With a sanding barrel. I'm hanging up my my remote. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so out of the loop. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, we usually have like 200 wheels, so it's like oh we dedicate like two hours to doing that. Man. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I, mean, I Literally, I, half of our trailer is all wheels and tires. We have like seven of those huge yellow and black Costco tow bins is all wheels and tires. Wow. And then we have like our four or five roller bags of actual race stuff and our chargers. <laughs> That's awesome. So what, what, if you had any advice for other racers, what would you, what would you give as your, your number one word of advice to other racers hoping to, to be as good as you two are? Um, first of all, I mean, you have to like really enjoy it. If it's not something that you, really enjoy it's not even worth doing honestly for the amount of money that it costs to go and like do this especially as frequently as we do is like if you don't even enjoy it you're not gonna get very far anyways because just gotta like, be mentally, fun. it would just be not fun at all exactly um, but then like you gotta really i think to if you wanted to succeed like the fastest way is to like just sit down and like really focus on like cleanliness and like being organized and always like being prepared both mentally and like mechanically like make sure your car is always good mm -hmm. and like all of that kind of correlates together because if it's always like clean and organized you're more likely to like see something out of place or like something coming loose on your car or if it's like covered in an inch of dirt everywhere you're not even going to be able to see half the screws on your car <laughs> so like just checking over everything and then like when you're out practicing and stuff is just like really make your practice time count like don't like if your car is like not even decent off the bat just don't go out there and waste resources like your fuel and clutch and tires and stuff it's like go back and really look it over and like think what would make it better and like just go out and do like small adjustments at a time and just make each and every little one count instead of just trying to drive a car that's not very good brandon i'm gonna hire you to be my mechanic how's that sound <laughs> 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 you, you you got it all figured out yeah it's you're, taking a lot of time you're 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 speaking like a veteran at this point and I want you to work on my stuff. <laughs> well, I'm only like four tables away most of the time, so that's right. <laughs> not, not very far. Yeah. And like another like giant thing for me at least is like there's been a lot of times where it's like my cars are just not good and you know, you can't just, like, pull it off the track because then you're just hurting yourself and wasting the money that you spent to go, you know, drive. And, mm -hmm. like, the best thing that you can possibly do is just, like, to the best of your ability, just try and adapt the car. Like, there's definitely times where it's, like, undrivable. But to a certain extent, like, a car is, like, always drivable. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's good advice for sure. So, anything else you guys would like to say, or Travis, do you 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 have anything else you want to know? Uh, I'm set. Um, really, one thing I just want to mention is obviously thank you guys for making the time for us. We really appreciate it, and you know, love that we can get you guys on here. And for anyone who doesn't know you already, hopefully, get to know you. Oh, no, right. thank you guys for having us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Super awesome opportunity, and we've been wanting to do it for a while. So I know <laughs> I felt bad because yeah, 
I felt we, we bad just the first time that we were going to do this. Like, uh, you got a hold of me, like, right after we put the first one together. I'm like, I'm an idiot. How, how did I not even think of that? <laughs> it's so, good. No, I'm, I'm, super ha- I'm super stoked that we could make it work. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And will we see you at uh, Winter Rage? Yes. yes. Okay, yep. good. Good. We will definitely I look, be there. I look forward to that. So, we do, too. That's a fun race, for sure. I didn't make it last year. Did you go last year? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We went yeah. right because we had all new cars and engines and everything. So that was kind of our break in weekend before DNC. So we kind yeah. of just right. did the shakedown on all our cars and everything. But it was really cool. Like the heated pits and stuff was, uh, that's like kind of part of the atmosphere thing was like everybody was in there. So like uh-huh. most of the people that you normally wouldn't see was all <laughs> under the same roof. So it was kind of nice. cool to have that, and like obviously pitting in the cold is never any fun, especially yeah. if you don't want to wrench on your car or do anything, and your fingers are freezing off. How yeah. about that? How about that pit situation we had at uh, at Fallout? That was like by far our best investments. Ever. Wasn't that <laughs> awesome? Ever. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, the fireplace with all the sides and everything was yeah. definitely made it less miserable. Yeah, and the uh, the astroturf floor yep. and oh yeah that was yep. that was we probably one of the most enjoyable situations i've i've been able to enjoy for at a race for sure most definitely awesome yep. and you know there's one person that wasn't really mentioned when, when we were thanking people and um i think your dad has put a lot of effort into into making this all happen yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Without my yeah. dad, we wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think uh, Dylan and I could really afford to do this on our own, <laughs> especially <laughs> to the extent that we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah your That's dad a has a big, big part of of your racing. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a especially hard, right? you know the stuff that he like makes for our cars are like. Oh, I know. Makes everything easier. That stuff's so cool. What uh, it, do you have a a name for the company you're you're producing the parts through, or not at the moment? Everything's kind of up in the air because right now, okay. between us and Chucky and Kenny and everything, we uh, have a lot of cool stuff for the RC industry. Oh, it's yeah. it's in development. All right, cool. Yeah. I like be that. A lot of cool stuff coming. I like, I like that. It. I was I was gonna plug it, but we'll. Uh, <laughs> We'll wait to plug it here uh, yep. once it's yeah. all set in stone. Once we get Remains it all, to be seen. Yeah. Once we get <laughs> it all situated, we will definitely let everybody know. Very Can't cool. Wait. Very cool. Yep. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait to see you guys soon. Yeah, we can't wait to see you. Yep. It's always fun at the track. <laughs> yes, it is. Always fun. <laughs> and off the track. Right. For sure. Yeah, right. guys. Well, thank you so much right. for making the time for us, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Be uh, we'll be seeing you guys really soon. Thank you, guys. All right. Awesome to be on here. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. One. All right. Thank you so much to our guests tonight for uh, making the time to come on and uh, talk to us here at Track Walk. Um, you know, huge thanks individually to Ash and Marcus. Uh, Brendan and Dylan um, was an absolute blast talking to all of you guys. And I'm, you know, uh, if you guys are listening, which I hope you are, you know, uh, you guys are welcome back anytime. So uh, we really appreciate, you know, um, <laughs> you making it so fun for us for sure. And we love doing it. So thank you guys. So what, we, the young guns, yep, yeah, the young guns, you're always going to be around. So, but, um, so, now that we've concluded that part, uh, there's one thing I wanted to mention before we sign off. And, uh, you know, this is more of a, I guess, a um, preventative um, response. Because I know if we didn't say anything about it, someone was going to ask us and wonder why. Um, look, everyone saw on Facebook what happened this past weekend in Boise. Uh, I mean, it's really really straightforward dude got punched three times by another dude on the driver's stand. Like that's, that's what happened. 
You watch the video. There's not much to debate there. You saw what happened on the track leading up to it. Um, Colin and I, you know, made the decision to really just not get into it that much on the show because, for one, um, we're not TMZ. Like, that's that's not what we do. We want to promote positivity and, you know, we want to cover the things that make our community better. Those are That's not one of them. Um, the other thing is that everything's been said already, you know, just read any comment section. There's nothing more that we can add. You know, there's, we're not the undisputed authority of people getting punched on RC. Like that's not what we do. So, um, you know, and the thing that I wanted to touch on tonight that, um, was bothering me in particular regarding the whole situation is the way that I've seen some people react to it. And, well, so what I've been seeing is that um, it's it's known that the guy that, you know, the the uh, the assaulter, right? I won't name his name because everyone already knows it. There's no point. But um, it, it was known that he was a serpent driver. He was. And I'm like, that's an emphasis on the was. That is no longer the case. Correct. You know, so that, you know, that that for wherever people think there was confusion like that has been taken care of. But people were wondering whether Serpent was going to make a statement. People were wondering if um, if Serpent was going to respond in any way, if they were going to come out and condemn the actions and stuff like that. And so I'm sitting here saying this to you right now, currently unaware if they said anything or not. I don't know. And the reason I don't know and I didn't go out to even look is I know as of yesterday they didn't. But I haven't even bothered to check today because it doesn't matter. No one, like, because the comments that I was reading was that, well, if Serpent isn't responding to this or they're not saying anything, then they must be okay with this kind of behavior. What do you think the answer to that really is? Do you honestly think that that company or any other company that is sitting out there really is looking at, like, the situation that happened that day and going... Yeah, you know, I think that that was perfectly valid or called for. We're okay with that, you know, as long as it was justified. There's no justification for it. No one ever said it was okay. The dude obviously made a mistake, as all of you have well pointed out in the comments. That's not up for debate. But why is everyone putting the company that, you know, happened to sponsor him, why is everyone putting them on the hook as if Serpent is the company that punched him? You know, like he wasn't punched in the face by an SRX two, And I'm not saying that to be funny. Like I'm saying that to like make the point like that didn't like they are not responsible for it. Do they condemn the, or Do they condemn that action? Absolutely. They do not condone what happened that day whatsoever. And it shouldn't take a statement from them for you to know that. And the fact that you guys are using a situation like this to fish out that kind of drama, it's sickening. And it's really disrespectful and unfair to the victim and the situation at hand. You're going to take that away from the victim who got hit and try and make it into this bigger deal, trying to suck the company involved and everything else. And what you're shifting the blame from the assaulter to the company. Why let him off the hook for that? He is 100% responsible for his actions. He's a grown man. He made that choice on his own. Serpent sure shit didn't tell him to do that. So my point being is that it was a really unfortunate situation that happened. Yeah, it's a big deal, but stop trying to make it into this whole like extended drama because that's not fair to anyone who was involved in that situation. That's not fair to Serpent. That's not fair to the victim. And to me, it's not okay to try and shift blame away from the assaulter because that is exactly what that does, whether you mean it or not. So... That's all I'm going to say regarding that situation because there's nothing more for me to add. And that's as much as this show is going to cover it because, like I said earlier, that's not what we do here. It is, you know, every other podcast wanted to say something about it. That's great. But, you know, we that's not Trackwalk's mission. We don't, we don't seek out drama. So that's, uh, you know, that's all I have to say about it and, you know. If anyone wants some elaboration on that, you can reach out to me anytime. 
So thank you, Travis. Yeah. So with that, um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a little bit of a longish episode for you guys because the Young Guns, you know, we want to make sure they get their talk time in, you know. So um, again, big thank you to those guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening to us every week. Um, you know, you guys mean the world to us, and you guys are what keep this fun. So uh, we can't wait to bring. You know, I can't wait to get this episode out, but. You know, as I sit here, it's a it's a Wednesday evening. It'll be at least Friday by the time you hear this. But uh, I can't even wait to get next week's episode out. So you know, thank you guys for get <laughs> for uh, for getting me fired up again. I appreciate it. We better start planning next week's episode. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm gonna we better start that soon. So uh, we didn't reach out for questions this week because of the way our interview schedule worked, it got kind of weird. So uh, you know, I apologize we couldn't get any viewer questions in there, but uh, we'll get some out for you guys next week. Um, and uh, I really, you know, I don't know how soon I'll be able to do this, but I really want to get some kind of call-in thing um, going for an episode. Yeah. Or so I would love to have some of you guys reach out to us uh, in the middle and get you guys recorded. So, uh, you know, I know a couple of you have been asking to come on too. So uh, don't worry. We haven't forgot about you. Um, we'll keep in touch. So um, anyways, uh, thank you guys for listening again. I really appreciate you guys. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll be seeing you guys soon. Uh, and you'll be hearing from me soon, especially. Um, and if apart from the podcast, well, I'll see you at the track. Keep the shiny side up. <laughs> <laughs>